In my last CWP videos I've talked about creating a star system and how to build silicon based life forms. For this video I would like to address the creation of an atmosphere for a planet that I have dubbed ESPA. The actual progress of building this world has been archived on both the CWP forum and the CWP discord server, which I want to recommend for any ambitious world builder watching this. Let's get to the atmospheres. As you are all aware, an atmosphere is the envelope of gas surrounding a planet. For this video let's take a look at the most abundant gases of Earth's atmosphere. The most abundant gas in Earth's atmosphere is the N2 molecule, a nitrogen compound. Atmospheric nitrogen makes up at least 78% of our atmosphere. The primary reason for that is that unlike oxygen, nitrogen is very stable in the atmosphere and is not involved to a great extent in the chemical reactions that occur. Thus over geological time it has built up in the atmosphere to a much greater extent than oxygen. After nitrogen we have a little over 20% O2, an oxygen molecule in our atmosphere. With oxygen being a very reactive molecule one can wonder how we build up that much oxygen. The answer is a well known chemical reaction known as photosynthesis. Using sunshine, water and carbon dioxide, plants and bacteria can produce carbohydrates. This process releases oxygen as a byproduct. The oxygen over the last billions of years in our atmosphere has kept building up due to the continuity of this process. It even reached levels as high as 35% during the Carboniferous period about 300 million years ago. After that, life on Earth had started to utilize more oxygen than was produced and the oxygen levels started to fall. A few million years after that, the Carboniferous rainforest collapsed and an extinction event followed. Over history, the oxygen levels have increased and decreased several more times and right now it's on the decline again. Next up we have water vapor, which makes up around 1% of the air. It can vary immensely. On a humid day it can increase to 5%, while on other days it may drop below a tenth of a percent. It's obvious why water should be in our atmosphere. Because it's the result of vaporized water from the oceans that then forms clouds and can rain down again. For these reasons, it's often unaccounted for in our graphs. The third most abundant gas in our atmosphere is a non-reactive noble gas called argon. It makes up about 0.93% of our atmosphere, and by being a noble gas, it's not involved in any natural chemical reactions. For gases less abundant than argon, measuring by percentage won't be sufficient anymore, as they quickly start dropping in value. To measure their abundance, science uses parts per million. This method is simply taking the example of a million particles molecules in this case and then counting the number of those that are of the same type. For example, 0.93% argon is 9300 parts per million. Our next most abundant chemical rests as 400 parts per million or 0.04%. This is the greenhouse gas of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere as a result of our emissions but also several natural processes. The amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere varies over the year and peaks in May. This phenomenon is caused by the fact that in spring the plants start to filter out the air's carbon dioxide due to their photosynthesis. But besides the yearly variation of carbon dioxide levels, there is a steadily increase visible at, at the total amount of CO2 levels over the years. This is called the Keeling Curve and is a breathtaking example of how serious climate change is. In 2016 it rose over 400 parts per million, an atmospheric concentration that hasn't been reached for at least 800,000 years. Next up we have the two unreactive noble gases of neon and helium at 18 and 5 parts per million. These gases are already pretty trace with only 5 in a million atmospheric particles being helium. For gases even tracer we need to increase our measurement precision to parts per billion. So 5 out of a million becomes 5000 out of a billion. With this our next gas is another greenhouse gas, methane or CH4, which is mostly produced by animals. There are 1800 parts of methane in a billion and just like carbon dioxide levels, methane levels are increasing st steadily. But methane is a greenhouse gas at least 20 times deadlier than CO2. When we see methane levels rise, we should definitely worry. Fortunately, the rise of methane levels is so far insignificant. Below methane, we have another unreactive noble gas called krypton, with 1100 parts per billion. Then at 550 parts per billion, we have H2, or hydrogen. Hydrogen is incredibly trace. Note that 550 parts per billion is equal to about 0.000055% of the air. Hydrogen is incredibly traced for two reasons. The first is, is that it's very reactive. It will bind with oxygen in the air to form water. And secondly, 
Like helium, it's so light it simply floats out into outer space. Now we get to the really trace parts of our atmosphere. Nitrous oxide, NO, at 325 parts per billion, commonly referred to as laughing gas. The deadly carbon monoxide with 100 parts per billion. The noble gas of xenon at 90 parts per billion. Nitrous dioxide at 20 parts per billion. Iodine at 10, then ammonia and sulfur dioxide. As we go down, tearing the atmosphere apart even further, we see one important gas is still missing. And that gas is ozone. O3. You know, the gas that makes up the ozone layer, without which land life might have never developed. Ozone is a gas that absorbs the sun's ultraviolet radiation. This radiation would otherwise have an ionizing effect on land life, killing it. The ozone layer is therefore vital to us. Yet ozone is only present in less than 600 parts per trillion in our atmosphere. How can such an important gas be so trace? This is because ozone isn't stable. It has a half-life of only about 6 days and then it decays into normal oxygen, O2. Also our percentage calculations have been done at sea level. Most ozone is higher up in the atmosphere. There's basically no ozone at sea level. Also ozone is the gas that's largely responsible for making our skies bluish. I hope you can now better envision your CWP's planet's atmospheric composition. Of course there are a few gases even tracer than 100 parts per trillion in our atmosphere you could put in. But most of these would require alterations in either your biochemistry or atmosphere in total. As for most of these gases would be metastable or poisonous to your life. These gases might have an important role in an alien atmosphere though. First of these gases would be chlorine, which if abundant enough could make the sky look greenish. Though chlorine is also very reactive. Same goes with fluorine, which if balanced right could give skies a yellowish color. You then have gases like hydrogen chloride and many others which you could put in. 